guys, it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. Today starts my February wrap up, so stay tuned. So if you watched my February TBR, you know that I have 14 books on my TBR for February. And I've actually ended up adding a couple more on. So at this point in time, I should have read, well, I should tell you, it is currently Friday, February 7th. And at this point, I should have completed at least three books to stay on target to complete all my books. But at this point, I have only completed one. And that is Nine by Zach Hines. This is the book that Marty picked for me to read. And it's about, well, it's set in this alternate world where they had what they called the Summer of Storms and all of this rain came down and formed these lakes and something else happened. All of the humans now have nine lives. Yes, like a cat. And they're not like reborn as babies or anything, but they are reborn from this lake at the same age and everything that they die. Pretty much they pick up where they left off, but they come back uh, smarter, fitter, thinner, things like that. And in order to control population growth, there are incentives, um, rewards for burning through your lives because, well, they don't want people living forever. So there's lots of things to encourage that. For example, you have to have burned your first life before you finish high school. Otherwise, you don't get to graduate unless you're a two. Anyway, something starts going awry with the lake. And that's all I'm going to tell you about. I ended up giving this 3.75. Yes, I was being that picky. But I did really enjoy it. And I do recommend it. It was a lot of fun. Now I need to go and read a lot to get caught up. <laughs> It is Saturday, February 8th, and last night I finished another book. I finished Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman. I give this five stars. I love it so much. It ties the mortal instruments, the infernal devices, the dark artifices, uh, I think even the Bane Chronicles. All of these get tied together in here and I love it so much and there's so much gem car stairs. Oh my gosh. Uh, so my favorite chapter in here I think is a uh, or story is Learn About Loss by Cassandra Clare and Kelly Link. Oh also I love all the art throughout like at the beginning of each chapter or story or whatever there is different art. But the Learn About Loss one is really cool because it's set here in Chattanooga, which I was just like, what? Jim Carstairs was here in Chattanooga? There's a shadow market in Chattanooga. <laughs> but yeah, it's all, it, there, there's so much stuff about Chattanooga in here. And I was just like, that is so cool. I'm excited. <laughs> and I cannot wait to read the um the new book uh chains of gold i believe oh this was so good okay so gosh it starts this one is actually in chronicle chronological order so it starts at the shadow market in london in 1901 and continues all the way until new york 2013 Really, really good. We have, jeez. Okay, so there's like Jim trying to find his cure to fix him so he no longer has to be a uh, silent brother and him and Tessa can finally get together. There's more of Thule in here. There's more of Magnus and Alec. There's characters that we've lost over time that we get to see again in here. There are new characters that are introduced in here. There's just, oh, it's so good. 
So I give this five stars. And that's all I have read for now. So it is currently February 10th and I've completed two more books. I finished them both yesterday. So I was buddy reading A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Mass. This is like a novella of the A Court of Frost. This is a novella from the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I mean, I, I think it's a novella. It may be a full novel. I don't know, but it's short. And it really just centers around the winter solstice and their holidays and their uh, gathering together and like doing for others and getting gifts for others. And um, we also get to know a little bit more about some of the other characters. And it's just super cute and fun. And I gave this four stars. And I also finished The Deceivers by Kristen Simmons. This was sent to me by Tortine. And they sent me this and Scammed, which is the sequel. And I'm super excited to read the sequel. That It just came out February 6th, I think. Very excited to read that. But this is... Okay, so it's an elite boarding school for con artists. So, our main character, Bryn, she is a con artist and she gets recruited for this boarding school where the person running the school, he wants to collect secrets on politicians and people that are not really good people and wants to find a way to remove them from their position whether it is a politician or a drug dealer or whatever he wants to get the bad people out so he recruits Bryn to sniff out the senator's son and kind of get dirt on the senator it was a lot of fun there were twists that I didn't see coming I'm really, I like, I really, really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. And I gave this four stars. So it is Tuesday, February 11th. Last night I finished Wish You Were Ire by Heather Vogel Frederick. This is the sixth book in the Mother Daughter Book Club and I really enjoyed it. Just like I've, I've enjoyed all the others. I think I'd give this four stars. This series has just been so much fun. It follows the girls from sixth grade all the way through their senior year of high school. I think we were in 10th grade for this one or 11th grade, maybe 11th grade. Yeah. And let's see, we have Megan Sweet 16. We have, um, a foreign exchange student from France who all the boys just go gaga or ooh la la for and a lot of drama and they're reading Jane Eyre, Eyre, Jane Eyre. Um, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy these books. And then today I started and finished Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett. This follows a girl named Bailey as she is leaving living with her mother in Washington DC and moving to California I think Malibu area to live with her dad and she has an online friend that they don't share their real names or any information with the you know personal information with each other but um, online Bailey goes by Mink and he goes by Alex hence the title Alex approximately and he wants to meet in person if she would fly out and visit with her dad and she is very cautious about a lot of things and she wants to meet him too but first she wants to kind of scope him out without him knowing that she's there to see if he really is who he says he is 
so she she doesn't even tell him that she's moved there let alone flying to visit there and then she ends up with a summer job and meeting another boy and things get complicated and it was a lot of fun and i gave it four stars i did the thing i have blue hair and now i've got to go to bed <laughs> But I just wanted to come on and show it because I always like to blow dry it and straighten it and see how it looks. And I love it. So I'm like way, way behind on checking in with you. Um, it is currently Friday, February 21st. Yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> also, I dyed my hair during, I think it was contemporary -thon. So I have to wrap up all of the video. Oh, I have to wrap up all the books that I read during contemporary -thon and what I've read since then as well because I'm that behind. So luckily I have been writing down on this little envelope here uh, my writings and everything. So on February 12th I read Giant Days Volume 7. I really enjoy this graphic novel series a lot. I gave this four stars. This is the girls coming home for Christmas holidays and then starting up their next semester of school. I think they're in their second semester of their sophomore year or their second semester of their junior year. But it's um, a UK based graphic novel about these three girls going through all the stuff you go through while in college. And it's super cute and I love it. On February 13th, I finished Monster by Walter Dean Myers. I gave this 3.5 stars. This probably would have been a four star read for me had it been written like an actual novel. But this is, well, it's a story about a boy who has been arrested for being involved in a crime where um, a drugstore was robbed and the clerk working at the drugstore ends up murdered and our main character here was being accused of being the lookout and now he is a 16 year old on trial for accomplice to murder and they're looking for the death penalty and throughout this whole thing it's written in two different ways so it's written in his journal entries and it's also written as a script the script is something that he's doing in high school he is like in a film club and kind of his the only way he can really wrap his brain around everything that's going on is he's writing it all down as a script and he says that to title it actually let me see exactly what it said the film will be the story of my life no not my life but of this experience i'll write it down in the notebook they let me keep i'll call it what the lady who is the prosecutor called me monster and i could see this whole movie playing out in my head but it really kind of took me out of the story having to like read all the cut to this cut to that close-up of this voiceover of this and like the settings and stuff that kind of took away for me a little bit um but yes it was three and a half stars for me and i'm going to pass this on to xander because i think not only would I think he enjoy it, but I also think it would be good for him to read because it shows the kind of trouble you can get into when you're hanging out with the wrong people. On February 16th, I finished, I was doing a buddy read of Paper Towns by John Green. This one I also gave a three and a half stars. I thought this was going to be a four, maybe even five star book when I started and for most of it. I really enjoyed this up until the last few chapters and then it just fell flat. It was meh. So we have this boy named Quentin who has been in love with the girl next door um, pretty much since childhood and she's always been with like the popular crowd and they stopped being friends when they were younger. And, 
but he's always carried a torch for her. Fast forward to they're in high school and she comes to his window one night and she wants him to help her go and wreak some revenge on some people. And they have this wild night and it was a lot of fun reading that. And then the next day she turns up missing and he believes that she's gone off on this grand adventure and then he finds clues that she's left him. So then it becomes this big hunt to find all her different clues and figure them out and find out where she went. That was also a lot of fun. There, him and his friends on this road trip type thing going to look for her. That was fun. Everything was fun until, like I said, the last couple of chapters and it just, it fell so flat and I was so disappointed with how it ended up being. So yeah, three and a half stars. Also on the 16th, I finished From the Corner of His Eye by Dean Coots. This took like a week to read and I was listening to the audiobook of this because I was reading a bunch of other books at the same time. This I ended up giving four stars and this book is complicated to explain without spoilers. Okay, so the way Dean Coots works in a lot of his books is he has multiple different storylines going at the same time and you're bouncing back from in, between these different either um, storylines or perspectives or whatever and then at some point they all kind of merge together and that's what happened in this. You have um, a young couple that are just madly in love. They're in their 20s. They've been married for 14 months. Everything's fabulous. They go on a hike and then the husband pushes her off a cliff and kills her for no reason. It was like, what? And then you have another timeline where you have this couple that are in their like 30s and the woman's pregnant and she's going into labor but she's trying to like do all these things before she leaves to go to the hospital and on the way to the hospital they get in a big car accident and then another storyline of this 16 year old girl who's been raped and she gets pregnant from the one and only time she's ever had sex and her father is a pastor or a preacher or something like that. She's very ashamed, but she doesn't tell anybody what happened and she tries to hide the pregnancy. She becomes anorexic. She wears a girdle throughout the whole pregnancy and over the entirety of the pregnancy, she only gains 12 pounds and there are complications obviously from all of that. And this got confusing because there were even more storylines that ended up coming up like small storylines that ended up joining those and then everything kind of converged together and I mean it was really whoa sorry if the angle changed but uh Katniss just knocked my camera over anyway I gave this four stars it was really good but I think this is a book probably better read physically than listen to. I only listened to it because um like I said I was reading multiple other books at the same time but well for one the audiobooks from back then are not the best quality at all but also because there are so many different stories going on it can get really confusing like just listening to it. This is one that I'm I believe I would read again because it was very entertaining but I'll probably physically read it when the time comes. Okay next up is Only the Stars Know Her Name by Amanda Marone and I'm not going to rate this. By my own rating system if I DNF something I typically give it a one. However this is a middle grade book that is very much not aimed to me. This is not my kind of book. From what I read, because I read like the first 
like 55 pages of this. It's not bad, but it's not my kind of book. I'm not invested. I'm not interested. I just don't really want to read any more of it. It's about, uh, it's Salem's lost story of Tituba's daughter. And it's about, well, Tituba's daughter and how her, Tituba and her father, they got sold to somebody up north and she was left behind and she ends up forming this little coven with some other girls that are also orphans and it, for her it's just uh it's about getting revenge on the family that she's with because they sold off her parents but it just i don't it just didn't interest me at all so dnf this so yesterday I finished The Wives by Taryn Fisher and oh my gosh. Okay, let me read you what I wrote because um, I did like a little review on my Instagram and this very much <laughs> encompasses exactly my thoughts on this book. I just finished reading The Wives by Taryn Fisher tonight, and OMG this book. It was a complete mindfuckery in the best possible way. This was definitely a five-star read for me. Here's the best way I can describe this book. It's one of those books you're just going to going along reading the story, and then halfway through something happens, and you're like, WTF. And then you're like, seriously? WTF? For the rest of the book. And then the end is like, damn. <laughs> Yep, that's how I would describe it. This book was awesome and ridiculous and crazy and broke my brain and it was fabulous and I loved it. So, okay, I wouldn't want to tell you anything more than like what the synopsis tells you, but this is about a woman named Thursday who shares her husband with two other women. He's a polygamist. He's married to three women and they don't know each other. They're all in different places, different homes, and he bounces between them. And Thursday happens to come across a piece of paper with the name and address of one of the wives. It's like a doctor's bill or something. And she seeks out this wife. And then she starts trying to find information on the other wife. She wants to know them. Because when she meets the other wife, which is the third wife, she sees bruises on her and suspects that she's being hurt by her husband which is also Thursday's husband and Thursday's never known her husband to be abusive so she's like what the heck is going on and this book oh my gosh read this book oh, I can't tell you anything more it, it will leave you going like what wait having to reread something like did I just read that what what oh my gosh <laughs> that was how I was throughout this book it was fabulous then today I read Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover and I give this four stars it was a lot of fun it was uh I was expecting it to be a little more emotional than it was and there was one part that I felt like the tiniest little twinkle of a tear in my eye, but nothing else. It's about, well, a no strings attached relationship, you know. Uh, not even friends with benefits because they weren't friends to begin with. It was just a uh, scratching an itch, I guess. And there are two rules. Let's see if I can, if it says it here. Yeah, he has two rules for her. Never ask about his past and don't expect a future. And that doesn't work out very well. It was really good. But yeah, four stars. It was a lot of fun. And that's got you caught up on what I've read since the last time I filled you in. <sighs> 
So quick update, it is currently Monday, February 24th, and I have completed two more books. Yesterday, I completed Rick by Alex Gino. So on Goodreads, I gave this four stars. For me personally, I think it's more like a 3.5, but I gave it four stars for the intended audience. This is middle grade, but it is early middle grade, like just like the summer before sixth grade and just entering middle school. But, and it's written, it's written for a kid, really. And it's about a boy named Rick who has a jerk of a best friend. And in sixth grade, he learns about this group called the Rainbow Spectrum Club. And he thought he might go and check it out because his friend Jeff, the jerk, is always going on about, oh, this girl's hot and that girl's hot. And Rick can see, like, why somebody might think a girl is, a certain girl is hot. But he's never felt that way. And he's never felt that way about a boy either. And so he's, like, doesn't really know if there's something wrong with him or what's wrong with him and why he's feeling like or not feeling like it seems most people are and this book is a great like educational resource really on all the different types of identities and it touches on gay straight trans there is a trans character in here um, pan, demi, asexual, aromantic, and it, I mean, it's great. And it also talks about, you know, how to treat people and how to, or when you should, you know, remove toxic people from your life, like Jeff the Jerk. And it was, it was a cute story. It it was a little on the, like I said, childish side for me. That's why I personally would give it a lower score. But four stars for its intended audience. And then today, just like a few minutes ago, I finished A Thousand Fires by Shannon Price. I found the audiobook for this on Scribd. This actually came out in November of 2019, but I've had this arc for a while. I think I give this three stars like I didn't not I didn't dislike it but I didn't really like it all that much either it's about gang wars really there's there's three g gangs we've got the herons the boars and the stags and our main character she wants revenge for her brother's death her brother was killed, so she believes, in like a drive-by shooting from this gang. And she wants to join one of the other gangs, or more specifically, she wants to join the Herons so that she can seek her revenge on the boar that shot her brother. And she ends up getting um, selected by not the Herons, but the Stags which most people didn't really know if the stags were real or not. And so she got selected by the stags and the leader of the stags knows who is responsible for her brother's death. But he doesn't tell her right away because he wants her to prove that she is um, a true stag, I guess. Also, our main character, this is a big trigger warning, our main character is into self-harm she likes to cut and I think there's another character in here that also cuts and there's another character who seems to be very depressed and they kind of talk about her depression um, occasionally and I think there is one attempted 
suicide and there's a lot of like I said gang violence murders that kind of thing so I don't know I mean so there was like towards the end like literally there's maybe this much left and something bad like one of the characters that we've known like from the beginning nice character they die and I'm not gonna say who or anything like that because I don't want to spoil anything but they die and normally when something like that happens by this late in the book I'm invested in all of the characters so when something like that happens it, it's like oh I'm so sad and I cry and for this I was just like oh well that's sad but it didn't even like bring a twinge of tears to my eyes or anything like that it just I wasn't connected with any of the characters so yeah I think I give this a three So it is Saturday, February 29th, leap day, which meant I had an extra day to read all of my books. And I'm happy to say I completed all of my books, plus four extra, um, which I have talked about those extra ones in this. But let me talk about the last three that I finished. Okay, so on Wednesday, I completed Reverie by Ryan LaSala. And this book is really hard to explain. So the way I told most people when I was talking about this book was that this is like one fever dream after another, quite literally. Um, a reverie is like somebody's daydream or fantasy come to life and everybody in their little world or area is sucked into this and all have to play a part but then you have these group of people who are lucid and it's up to them to make sure these reveries come to a conclusion and everybody gets out safely and nobody remembers that this actually happened and it was you know wasn't just they have to unravel it and put it back into the person's brain that fantasized it or whatever yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of crazy that goes on in this. And there's also this mystical drag queen named Posey. Yep. It's like a sorceress drag queen. <laughs> okay, so I think on Goodreads I'm going to give this four stars, but for my own personal rating I would probably say a 3.75 just because I really 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 enjoyed it but a book for me personally won't get four stars unless I plan on rereading it in the future and I don't know that I'll reread this uh, I like I said I really 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 enjoyed it but it's not one that I would read again so yes, I would give this a 3.75. And then yesterday I finished a little early. I finished The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. This is like the novellas and stuff prequel to The Throne of Glass. And I was doing a buddy read of this. I'm doing a buddy read of Throne of Glass as well as A Clash of Kings. If you're interested in joining either of these buddy reads... I'll include my Twitter here. Send me a message on Twitter and I'll add you to the group chat. But yes, um, read this. Really enjoyed it. Didn't enjoy it as much as um, the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I really loved that. This was more of... This was also a 3.75 for me. And then this book kind of surprised me because I'm not, like, I don't read a lot of nonfiction. Most of the time, I mean, sometimes it's interesting, but a lot of the times it's more, I don't know, boring to me. But this book was so good and it was so entertaining. And I was just like, 
constantly when when I was reading it I was constantly talking to other people about it and like sharing tidbits from it and I give it five stars and that is will my cat eat my eyeballs by Caitlin Dowdy I really enjoyed this it's weird because it's like this grisly topic but this is told in such an interesting and dare I say entertaining way and I, I loved it and I absolutely would read it again and I would recommend other people read it I want to let Xander read it it's just so interesting and you know I, I learned all kinds of stuff from this that I didn't know and not all of it was like grisly like I've had exchange students from Thailand I didn't realize that Siam which I I have heard of Siam I didn't realize that Siam is what Thailand is now. I also didn't know that the most famous conjoined twins were from Siam, which coined the term Siamese twins. And that was in here. That was pretty cool. So yes, I give this five stars. And I don't even think I told you what this was about. <laughs> but this is big questions from tiny mortals about death. So Caitlin Dowdy is a mortician and she has these questions that kids have asked her repeatedly over the years and she goes through and answers them in a way that anybody can understand and like I said it was interesting and entertaining she answers questions like will my cat eat my eyeballs uh, also things like what would happen to an astronaut body in space um, will I poop when I die uh, if I die, if I died making a stupid face, would it be stuck like that forever? Can we give grandma a Viking funeral? Why don't animals dig up all the graves? What would happen if you swallowed a bag of popcorn before you died and were cremated? Things like that. I loved it. So, let me see if I can get all of this. And, oh gosh. This is what I read in February. 18 books in total. Which is not too shabby. I also read like a, a thing and it did count on Goodreads. I was surprised it actually showed up. It was like a little 10 page ebook that some smutty little 10 page thing that I found. Anyway, I don't even remember the title of it. But I gave that like three stars anyway so if you count that then technically I read 19 but I'm not really counting that I read 18 books in February I'm super happy about it so have you read any of these books did you like them did you not comment down below and let me know well I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give me a big thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos like this click that subscribe button down below and until next time remember to always be completely you